All right, all right, guys. We're here with Coach Todd Ginn of the Alexandria Valley Cubs. Um, we're here at Larry Ginn Field, uh, named after his father. Um, Coach Ginn, you guys came came off a pretty successful season, made it to the third round of playoffs. Um, talk about some of the things you guys um, have been working on this summer to to kind of get past that level and, and make a run to the state championship. Yeah, we, uh, you know, I think it's a cliche. High school, you know, we. we a lot of coaches will say, "Well, we worked on us," but that's that's what we really focused on uh, mm -hmm. on this spring. Um, we graduated a lot of good players, um, and and still have a lot of guys here that are that can play and are going to be really good for us this year. Mm -hmm. But had some inexperience uh, on the line and and really uh, just built confidence this summer. You know, just really, uh, I was I was pleased with the way our weight training went. It was great. Um, Really got a lot of strong guys. Got got some guys that I think are hungry to, to that hadn't got to play um, because uh, last year, as much as you know, just that's that's what's great about our team this year. So competitive, a lot of a lot of uh, opportunity for a lot of new guys to play, and and they're not young guys. They're they're you know juniors and seniors that we were lucky enough last year to have a bunch of seniors that were good, good leaders and good players, and and these guys are very capable. That's about to take their place. Um, and it's just their turn, and and you know as far as just just building confidence, and because uh, you know confidence is number one thing in, in football, knowing <laughs> knowing where to be and when to be there, and, and prepared is, is a big deal. All right, um, you talk about some some of the guys you've got stepping up. Uh, name some of those some of your top newcomers you've got coming in this year. Well, you know, uh, uh, newcomers, you know, uh, you, you you're going to see our whole offensive line mm -hmm. is considered newcomers. Um, okay. You know, but uh, as a unit, I think I think we're six or seven or even eight deep on the offensive line, which then in high school ball transfers to we're six, seven, eight deep on the defensive line as right. well. So uh, the defensive line's not as new. Uh, we only lost one guy on that defensive line front. But like I said, all five of the offensive linemen are, will be new. Um, you know, but we've got some older guys that are, you know, Javez and, and Ross are both super athletic guys. Uh, you know, uh, Avante, Avante Davis, really, really solid. Uh, probably, um, you know, in my eyes, so, so smart and prepares on defense so well. Javaris Williams is, is so athletic uh, at the end. And then, uh, you know, Braxton Tucker down there at the tackle. And then uh, I think you interviewed Trent a while ago. Trent mm -hmm. is a mammoth of a man, and, <laughs> and he's our nose guard and, yeah. and plays well. And, you know, I'll forget to mention because there's so many pieces this time. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I think uh, I think the, the word team is really going. I mean, you've got you've got some super athletic guys. You know, mm -hmm. we've got to move in Ryan Scott, mm -hmm. um, who's who's really athletic, going to help us. You know, our kid's going to help us tremendously on the line. Upton's going to help us at fullback and then on defense as well. And you know, uh, we've just got some guys that that I think our team is going to be pretty good. You know, everybody. Um, a lot of times around here, especially at Alexandria, our running game's usually really good. And mm -hmm. I think you're going to see that again. I think you're going to see athletic guys that can really run the football. And I think our, our line's going to be stout enough that we're going to we're going to make people stop that first. Cool, cool, cool. Um, I talked to the guys earlier about some of the teams in your region. You got you got leads and center point teams yeah. like that are very athletic. Yeah, you know, playing uh, playing in the region that we play in, you know, like you said, with leads and center point and those guys. It prepares you uh, for a lot of the athleticism you're going to see in the playoffs, especially if you make a run, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you know, I, I was talking to some guys the other day. They were asking, how's the region, how's the region going to be, you know. Really, I, I hate to say it, but I was raised, my dad, and he just, he said, don't look ahead. Look at that, that one game, one game. And I'd love to even look at center point, but, you know, yeah. we're going to focus on Jacksonville right. uh, first, and then we're about center point after that. But, um, you know, I think uh, – the other day, uh, I failed to mention at our media day mm -hmm. um, that our kickers are really, really good this year. I was going to bring know? him up, and, yeah. And that's that's something as far as in high school that you don't – a lot of people don't have is, yeah. is, you know, A, the chance to kick the ball in the end zone, make the team start on the 20, yeah. and then the chance also when you cross midfield to have a chance to put points on the board. And uh, that's one thing I think that's going to uh, really help us this year because uh, Cleet – and Torres both are very capable guys, and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know Cleet just being a seventh grader and an eighth grader last year, <laughs> you don't want to put that kind of pressure on him. But right. he's proven that he can take it. So, uh, right. and now he's gotten bigger and stronger, and 
and uh, our kicking game is going to be really good this time as well. That's good. Um, that, and you were, you were talking about taking one game at a time. That was something I talked to the guys about because that seems like that that phrase kept coming up one game at a time, one game at a time. Is that something you you kind of stress during the spring and summer? Uh, hey guys, we got to focus at one game at a time. Well, yeah, you know we we stress. You know we we put goals out there. Right. You know as, as here, you know it's tradition to win. You yeah. Know what I mean? Oh yeah. So, oh yeah. <laughs> so that's always a goal here, but to be the best we can be, mm. you know, as far as on and off the field, is always a big thing that we just hammer in them all the time and uh and then this one week at a time mm -hmm. you know day by day by day take care of what you need to take care mm -hmm. of and and to not you know try to i mean we, we're all human right. we anticipate and as the season goes on it's harder because you anticipate those games you know that are mm -hmm. going to be playoff makes or breaks and that yeah. kind of stuff yeah but we just try to constantly just keep the guys focused in and and one game at a time, one week at a time. And, and at a staff, that's hard too, because yeah. you really want to look yeah. at film of, you know, <laughs> you really want to look at film on down the line, but we just try to focus in. And when we finish on Friday, win or lose, we mm -hmm. take off Saturday, mm -hmm. come in and, and go to work on the next week. Good deal. Um, as a coach, does it make, it make you feel good that, you know, your guys kind of, when they when they're interview, they talk about they they talk about some of the things you preach to them. I mean, does that kind of say okay? I'm, I'm getting through to these guys. Well, you know, that's that's one thing about uh, our community here. You know, I, yeah. I feel like I feel like you know we've got good parents mm -hmm. that raise their kids the right way. Yeah. And uh, you know, as as far as us, we're lucky as a staff because we just get to we get to take those kids. And my, you know, a lot of people will say, well, you talk about what they're going to say in the interview. Do you tell them what to say?" <laughs> I've never had a, you know, never talked to a kid about what to say or not to say. Right. Um, you know, kids are immature sometimes, and, and they say, but you just want them to be and talk <laughs> and be like they are and, and be real and yeah. And uh, you know, the fact that you say they they say a lot of the things that I say mm -hmm. just just tells me, you know, that they respect, you know, what we're doing here, which is a big big deal. Mm -hmm. And uh, therefore, that's you know, that's why I love these guys so much as well. Mm -hmm. You know respects give and take thing yeah. and uh, those guys respect us as a staff and work hard for us and we love them for it. I can see that. Um, I can definitely see that just being out here hanging out with you guys today. I can see there's a lot of love out here and, and, that, and, that's, and that's important. Um, before we close down this interview, um, I talked to Mr. Deason today and uh, I know everybody knows his situation. Uh, is there anything you want to say to him on camera? Because he's he's going to be watching gonna and watch, waiting. Yeah, he's yeah. going to watch it for sure. He's, yeah. big, he's a big fan of, of yours and, and y'all's crew. Um, you know, we just, uh, the good Lord's in control. Yeah. You know, and he, and he knows that. And you can tell by his posts on social media, he knows that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he, he knows. He's, yeah. he's finding out, Deason is finding out. Yeah. This place is a very, very special place, yeah. and uh, you know it's special to me because I've lived here my whole life. Yeah. But he, from a, for an outsider to come in and start to see it, mm -hmm. um, it's just, I, I can't imagine an outsider that comes in and then starts to see the way our community treats folks. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, we just we just wish them the best, you know. Uh, and uh, he knows he's, he's said it a million times. Yeah. If he needs anything from us, mm -hmm. all he's got to do is ask. You know, he, right. he was he was. Uh, He's a guy that, that carries his feelings on his sleeves. You don't have to, he's always, you know, yeah. telling people how much he loves them and that kind of stuff. Yeah. And uh, I think for him to be the way he is and built the way he is to carry his feelings like that and to see this community reach out to him during this time, mm -hmm. I, I, I can imagine it's just for him and his family, he's probably feeling really, really good about uh, the move that he made here. Yeah. All right. All right, Coach Gein, I appreciate you sitting, uh, talking to us. Good luck to you guys this season and go Cubs. Hey, appreciate you very much. All right. Jackson Tucker, defensive lineman, Alexandria High School. Javez McGee, quarterback in DB Alexandria High School. Trey Turner, nose tackle, Alexandria High School, number 73. Javaris Williams, linebacker, Alexandria High School. All right, guys, we're here in Death Valley, uh, also known as Alexandria. We're here with these four guys today to talk about this uh, upcoming season. Um, you guys had a pretty successful season last year, uh, made it to the second round of playoffs. Um, third round. Third round. Further than I thought. <laughs> um, based off that success last year, um, where do you guys see this season going? Let's start over here. Well, we plan to win the state championship, of course, but I mean that's far that's as far as we can go. I think we got all the potential in the world. Yeah. 
man, with the work we've been putting in this summer, I think we can make a run for state. Right. Got to make it farther than what we did last year. We're going to take each game one by one. You know, we can't get ahead of where we need to be. Okay. Yeah, just like he was saying, got to take each game, game by game. And I think we, I think we have a good chance of winning it all this year, but we just got to see if we get better every day at practice. Right. Well, I see it that we got to communicate more on the field, mm -hmm. and I believe that we can make it this year. All right. Um, yeah, y'all kind of, some of y'all answered my question. My next question, um, I was going to ask, what, what are some of the things – do, do y'all have to do? I'm taking y'all are the four leaders of the team, or Coach Gann wouldn't have, wouldn't have picked y'all. Um, what as leaders? What do y'all um, have to do to make sure y'all reach that reach that level, reach that goal of, of winning the state championship? I think we just gotta stay focused and you know get better get better every practice and get you know when we start to start the season get better every game. Should mm -hmm. be the same team week one as you should at the end of the season. You gotta, you gotta get better each week. Okay. I, I think say if we do that. We'll be all right. All of us have experience playing in the game, and mm -hmm. the young guys are looking up to us. Mm -hmm. So we gotta set an example for the young guys. So make sure they be ready. That's how we are. All right. Yeah, it, it just comes down to us being leaders and leading the young guys up to become uh, good players. We just gotta keep on leading and uh, keep on putting their work in practice and set a good example. Mm -hmm. Same way. Uh, we just gotta be positive too. Like, I even have, have a brother of my own, so, I, so he has to look up to me, and I'm trying to do the best that I can. All right. Um, I did make one of, one of y'all's games last year. Uh, Mr. Deason uh, invited me out to a game. Uh, I came to the Piedmont game, um, and I had heard about the three-headed monster last year, and I, and I actually got to see it firsthand. Um, so um, – Tell us about the guys y'all got returning, and I think we got a transfer in too, correct? Um, I think at media day you said the three-headed monster's still here. So talk to us about that. Uh, you know, we, we're not working around one person. Uh, right. I just said three-headed monster because three of us going to be in the backfield together right. at the same time most likely. So, yeah. you know, we just putting in work right now. Yeah. You know, we've been going to camps. Uh, we've been training all summer. And we're you know, we're going to see Piedmont again. You know, when they stop one person, you know, they got to stop. They got to stop the rest of us too. Yeah. Just let my editor know to, to cut that part out. <laughs> Data that out. <laughs> um, let's talk about the region you guys are in. Uh, Y'all are in the tough region. You got teams like Centerpoint, Leeds. Um, I've seen Centerpoint play already. Those guys, they've got some athletes out there. Um, Talk to us about the teams in your region and, and um, I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna start over. Um, you guys are in a pretty tough region, uh, 5A Region 6, I do believe. Uh, you got teams like Centerpoint, Leeds, Corner um, in, that, in that region. Um, talk to us about the strength of that region and how playing such strong teams during, during the season helps you guys get ready for the playoffs. I think those teams prepare us, prepare us a good bit, give us a good variety of teams to go up against. Like you said, Leeds and Center Point, they're both super athletic. Mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're not going to face many teams more athletic than them. Yeah. And I think they prepare us, prepare us good yeah. for the playoffs. You know, I say the same thing. You know, they they give us a good look for the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Teams go across with in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. You know, they do have some pretty good athletes. And well, we went 0-5 in the region last year. Yeah. 0-4, 0-5. Something like that. Yeah, so, you know, do the same thing this season, but yeah. we can't we can't go into it every game. Right. You know, we gotta go game by game, just like yeah. I've been saying. Yeah, Leeds and Center Point, those are some pretty tough teams. They're real athletic, real strong, real fast. But it just comes down to um, who works harder in the summer and the off season. And I think we capitalize on that pretty good. Like Trent said, we just gotta compete every day, mm -hmm. and uh, during the games, we just gotta uh, stay on track and. Just do our job. Yeah. Um, I keep hearing a, a common thing uh, out of the four of you. Y'all keep talking about taking and taking it one game at a time. Is that something Coach Ginn has been preaching to you guys all summer? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Um, uh, as far as the summer workouts, have y'all had pretty good particip participation uh, this summer from the from the team? Have y'all, as leaders, have y'all been kind of pushing the younger guys in? Hey, guys, come on and work out. Yes, and and talk about talk about that as well. We all we all try to make as many as many as we can, mm -hmm. and 
you know, put, like you said, push the younger athletes. A lot of times they don't, don't want to be up that early. They don't want to push themselves, especially if they don't think they're going to play this year. But, you know, they're the, they're the next generation coming up. we got to get them in that working mindset every right. summer. Right. Okay. Oh, man, the work at this is crazy, you know, for every sport. Everybody's yeah. coming in, waking up in the morning, yeah. putting in work because we all had the same goal, and that's to go to state. Or some of us, we even want to go play college ball. Yeah. You know, it's not going to happen for everybody. Right. And that's why we've been focusing, focusing on, on ourselves for spring. Mm -hmm. You know, summer, we haven't been playing 707. Mm -hmm. Just focusing on ourselves, you know, going to camps, training, waking up every morning at 6. You know, it's tough. We'll be exhausted, but we're going right. to show because we want to be the best. Exactly. Right. Yeah, we just got to be leaders and um, – yeah, we push the younger guys to come out <clears throat> for the workouts. I mean, like it's like you said, some some of them don't want to because they think they're not going to play. So like, why well, put in the work of it? But like, we just got to keep on pushing them to be leaders yeah. and try to get them out here. Yeah, yeah I know they don't like getting up early in the morning, but it's time to get to work. The more you put the work in, yeah. you might never know you could be on that field right now. Yeah. Um, like I said, I, I came to that one football game last year, and I came to several basketball games. Um, especially during the playoffs, the playoff run in basketball. Um, sports is a big thing here at Alexandria. Um, Y'all seem to be winning in all sports, uh, football all the way down to, to, to baseball and softball. Uh, talk about that tradition here in Alexandria and how it means, how much it means to you to play for such a tradition-rich school. Yeah, yeah there's nowhere, nowhere else I'd rather play. Like I, like I was saying the other day, mm -hmm. uh, it's just everybody here knows what it is. Know what it's about, and right. they want everybody knows the kind of work we're putting in, and mm -hmm. you know what co their coaches expect, right? Expect and kind of work we're putting in, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'd say we played it, I'd say we played the way we played every game because the support we get, you mm -hmm. know, the fans come out here and watch us, the teachers, you know, they're supporting us every day at school, yeah, in the classrooms, you know, at practice, yeah. You know, then we got the coaches, they we look up to them, mm -hmm. and they you know, the my teammates, you know, they I know they. Some of them want to be like us, you know. Yeah. Those guys, so yeah. we got to just set examples and, you know. All right. Yeah, I mean, I've been here since I was in kindergarten, and it's it's a good, it's a real good opportunity to play for this school. It's just the whole community they treat us good. They like set up events for us. Like, mm -hmm. it's a, it's just real special being a part of this community. And it's a good look for us too. We all lost in the third round of the playoffs, and mm -hmm. it's good motivation for us to go farther than, than that. Yeah, I noticed that, um, like I said, all the games that I came to last year for, between football and basketball, I noticed the community support. Um, I saw teachers. I mean, it was it was unreal, and I felt like I was at home. Um, and I told Mr. Deason, um, I mean, I said, man, I said, I appreciate you inviting us out and whatnot. I said, we're, we're going to take y'all in as one of our schools. So, uh, so y'all be seeing my face a lot. Uh, uh, last question, last thing before we go. Um, I talked to Mr. Deason earlier. He told me to tell you guys, hey, he misses y'all. Is there anything y'all want to say say to him and his family before we cut this video? Miss you too, man. Yeah. I, I, I want to thank him for what he did for us last year, you know, mm -hmm. letting the fans come out here and support us because, you know, COVID, and he's still letting them come out here and support us. And yeah. I, that's why we did what we did in both sports, football and basketball. Yeah. yeah. Right. Thank you. I mean, I ain't really got to meet you um, much because I did online, but I'll see you this year. Yeah, I did online too. And we, had a chance to really form a relationship or nothing, but you know, I know it. I know he's he's super into supporting that all all athletics, and yeah. I really like him. And congratulations on your daughter being born. All right, all right, guys. I appreciate it. Good luck to you guys this season. I'll I'll be at all your home games and your playoff games. So uh, good luck and uh, go Cubs. Appreciate it. Appreciate right. it.